Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Dedeker and Jace teach me, a born and raised atheist, all about the Bible. So, Jace and Dedeker, how are we doing today? We're doing oh, all right. I'm fantastic. Um, Lovely. I got back into pole class last night and burned <laughs> off all the skin in my thighs. So oh, no. It- it passively hurts just to be sitting down in a chair right now. So that's that's where I'm coming to you from today. Gracious. <laughs> but I'm glad that that makes you fantastic. Puts I have you in a fantastic oh, no. mood. I love pole class. I absolutely love pole class. But like the inside of my thighs look like the plague happened. Oh, no. Wow. Well, I'm sorry to hear yeah, that. It's like purpley and splotchy and all kinds of gross. Jeez. Uh, yikes. I have learned about a cure or a treatment for pain that was even used back in biblical days, which is drinking alcohol. For pole class? Oh, I see. <laughs> I thought you were going to hit me with some kind of esoteric like salve or supplement or herb or something that I was supposed to take to help with bruising. <laughs> Isn't it salve? Uh, people say salve. Oh, uh, right? well, you learn I something new every day. I'm a, I'm a people. Well, it's like that classic song, you know, you say salve and I say salve. You say <laughs> Bible and I say Bible. Bible. You know that. that (laughs) Good. Love it. (laughs) Um, Yes. I also am excited for us to continue on with Judges because if you remember last time, we left on a cliffhanger. Uh, I remember that what's his butt, Abimelech (laughs) killed Uh a bunch of people. And then, wait, did his brother, did his little brother who he didn't kill, did he kill Abimelech? No, do you not remember how Abimelech died mm-hmm. in the most dishonorable of ways imaginable? Uh, a woman. It was a woman. <laughs> oh yeah. So a woman <sighs> killed him and then he was like, yo, can can somebody who's not a woman kill me, please? Right. <laughs> so yeah, that uh, I can't you know, so that it won't read on my tombstone killed by a woman because God forbid. <laughs> right. Cool. And then that happened. And then wait, what was the cliffhanger? So here's the the uh Previously on Drunk Bible Study, Judges. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. The children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. The people, the princes of Gilead, said one to another, What man is he who will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So we're setting up for like... Who's the next king? Who's going right, to lead okay. us to so fight? They're ready. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're ready to cool. go. They're ready to rumble. And yes, we're setting up the now we need our next hero to emerge. Exactly. Who and is it going to be? <laughs> I think God, we're going to find out. It. Exactly. <laughs> so what are we drinking on this fabulous afternoon? Well, uh, I'm having a lovely highball, chew high situation in a can called Koyomi. It's a yuzu and lime highball, and it's quite refreshing. Oh, Oh, how lovely. That sounds quite refreshing. I guess it is summertime for you in Australia right now, so that makes sense. Well, I'm having a hard kombucha. It's very nice. Flying embers, hard kombucha, ancient berry. It's, It's not... I, I'm wondering if I'm actually getting any any inebriated at all off of it because it's like I feel like the probiotics are canceling out the inebriation, but you know. I'm not, I'm not sure that's how probiotics work. I was yeah, I was oh, just okay. gonna ask, is that how probiotics work? That they cancel out inebriation? They they Probably like not. drink up all the all the alcohol molecules for you and they get drunk instead of you. Oh, is there that, you go. Uh, it's just yeah. eating it up in my stomach. Yeah. I don't know about that, but um yeah it's kind of fun it's tasty so i'm enjoying myself how about you jace i'm just having another one of my georgetown ipas there's really nothing worth talking about this time let's just get into the judges sweet all right (laughs) all right so today we're reading judges 11 12 and 13 we want to remind everybody to read responsibly and drink responsibly you can read along with us or you can listen to us while you're in the car i did not do that correctly you can drink along with us or you can read oh Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not looking at the copy. That's this is why. so hard for Dedeker. <laughs> this is great. 
You can drink along with us, or you can listen to us while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, let us move on to Judges 11. I thought you said Jeff, and I was like, who's Jeff? (laughs) That's a weird name for the Bible. Classic Bible character, Jeff. Now, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, no. Is he going to be cast as... Oh, definitely. Okay. On the short list, Jeff Goldblum on the short list. Let's imagine Jeff Goldblum in this role, and we'll see if that feels right after a little bit. So this is like his audition. This is Jeff Goldblum's (laughs) kind of cold read. Oh, I love it. For this part. Okay. I'm loving this already. (laughs) Now, Jeff Thaw... The Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, mm. and uh. and he was the son of a prostitute. Wh- really? And, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, interesting backstory so far. And Gilead became the father of Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove out Jephthah. Oh, okay. I'm I confused. see. So, yeah, because okay. they were talking about Gilead like it was a person, but it's a city, right? No, it's a person. But it is a person. It's oh. a person. Remember, Jerubal, Jerubal was Gilead. No, also. that was Gideon. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> right. Exactly. No, I'm Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have this this recurring theme in the Bible of, of like the name of a clan slash nation also is right. the name of its leader, but <laughs> yeah. also is the name of its ancient patriarch. So it's a little bit confusing. So Gilead That's here represents confusing. a person who is connected to Gilead as a nation slash a tribe. But this is a stepson situation, is that Jeff, Jephthah is the son of a prostitute mm-hmm. who Gilead then marries, becomes his stepdaddy. Then Gilead's wife, the prostitute, has sons, and then his sons drive out their stepbrother, Jephthah. Yeah, I see. So the new okay. sons drive out Jephthah, who's the oldest one, even though he was, I guess, a born out of wedlock. That's what I think, because this is what happens. Okay. Okay, Gilead's okay. wife bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove out Jephthah and said to him, you shall not inherit in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Okay. Uh, oh. Not the story yeah. that we had. Okay, not the I was story wrong. we had. No. Yes. Dang it. That makes more sense, though. So his, his legal wife is the one who gave, had these sons who drove out the, the prostitutes. Okay, set. so Gilead is actually his father, not stepdaddy. Right. Okay. And yes. his legal wife is... His legal wife sons are like, no, 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 you're the child of another woman. Get out of here. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Even though you're a mighty man of valor, we don't care. All right. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain fellows to Jephthah, and they went out with him. Uh, okay. It <laughs> happened after a while that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. It was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, come and be our chief that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Oh, how the tides have turned. That <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, long. that's nice. Jeez. Oh, here we go. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, didn't you hate me and oh. <laughs> drive me out of my father's house? And I love that it said it like that. Are you, wait, are you doing a Jeff Goldblum impression here? <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm just sprinkling the tiniest flavor of okay. Jeff Goldblum okay. in it. I don't think I can do it justice. Only Jeff Goldblum can do Jeff Goldblum justice, but he I'm does just, an impression of himself at this point. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sprinkling a little flavor just to help okay. you imagine okay. how this audition is going. Right. Didn't you hate me and drive me out of my father's house? There's a lot of hand gestures happening, (laughs) as you can imagine. And why are you come to me now when you're in distress? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Therefore are we turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight with the children of Ammon, and you shall be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight with the children of Ammon, and Yahweh deliver them before me, shall I be your head? The elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, Yahweh shall be witness between us. Surely according to your word, so will we do. So he's do like think? bargaining. Gonna... Yeah, he's, and he's bargaining. he's saying, shall I be your head? Like, shall I be the, the brains of this operation? 
No, like, I like after we're done her. fighting, am I going to be your leader then? Oh, 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 oh yeah, cool. And they're Got like, it. yes, yeah, Yahweh's, you know, swear to God, cross my heart. Right. Uh, you know, stick a needle <laughs> in my eye. Do you ah. think that they're going to they're gonna stand up to their word? No. No. <laughs> Definitely <Okay>. not. <laughs> and then Yahweh's going to get pissed and kill everyone and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Or, or, Jeff, or Jeff is going to get pissed and he'll kill everyone. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Who knows? All right. Let's see. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and chief over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before Yahweh in Mizpah. Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What have you to do with me that you are come to me to fight against my land? The king of the children of Ammon answered to the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when he came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon, even to the Jabbok, into the Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those lands again peaceably. It's like I'm in a contemporary world history course, (laughs) and it's like the same thing going on, right? It's like, oh, why are you fighting? Well, because they took it from us first. Like, why are you fighting? Because it's our land, and they're trying to take it. And it's just like, okay, well, there we are. Is that not sad a little bit that, like, we basically haven't changed since biblical times, which feels so far away from us, and yet here we are continuing to do the same things? I have well, I have often had this idea that once you put people together in countries that were kind of at the level of like toddlers. But yeah. it's like if he were to sort of characterize countries and their diplomatic relations with each other, it's like at the level of toddlers. Like we haven't really moved past that once you apparently combine not. us. Once you put us in big groups. Especially not our current leader. But yes, well, continue. Yeah. Jephthah sent messengers again to the king of the children of Ammon, and he said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel didn't take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when they came up from Egypt, and Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the oh, king... This yeah. is this story I remember. again. I remember. This was... Well, oh. Uh, okay, I'll recap the story. It recaps yeah. the story. Israel <laughs> sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom didn't listen. Of course. In the same way, he sent to the king of Moab, but he would not listen. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Wow, that's actually went... like coming back around and being relevant. I, this is cool. Huh. <laughs> Got to be hundreds of years ago, right? At yeah, I mean, definitely. For sure. Then they went through the wilderness and went around around the land of Edom uh-huh. and the land of Moab and came by the east side of the land of Moab and they encamped on the other side of the Arnon, but they didn't come within the border of Moab for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel <laughs> sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, let us pass, we pray you through your land to my place. But Sihon didn't trust Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and encamped in Jahaz and fought (laughs) against Israel. Yahweh, the God of Israel, delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they struck them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. They possessed all the border of the Amorites, from the Arnon even to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness even to the Jordan. So now Yahweh, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And should you possess them? Okay. So this is the argument that Jephthah is making. Yeah. So can you, first can you summarize like, this for us? Yeah, please. Thank you. So first Jephthah is like, hey, why are you fighting? Why are you beefing? And uh, I already forgot. Who are we fighting? The Ammonites. Okay. Yeah. Then the king of the Ammonites is like, well, Israel took our land and we want it back. Uh-huh. And Jephthah's like... No, 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 no. We didn't take your land. We tried to pass through it and you wouldn't let us. And then we tried to pass through this other way and you wouldn't let us. And then we tried to pass through a third time and then we killed everybody. Yeah, so, and you, so we took okay. your land. Exactly. Um, so well, why, that, why would you want it back? If I remember the story, it was that we tried to... I thought these were three separate kingdoms. But like they tried to pass way, through but, the third one. Yeah. And then instead of letting them pass, they were like, actually, we're going to attack you. And then yes. they fought back and then took the land. So he's kind yes. of saying, like, so that justifies it. 
basically, yeah. So, so he's basically like, we didn't take your land. We just took your land. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Jeez. So you can you can't have it back. Come on. He's like, but really, okay. like you kind of started it by attacking us back then. So you kind of started it by not letting us through, and so really, like we deserve it. So we really don't need to give it back to you. Yeah, really like the way this really shouldn't be a, a a conversation. The politics of ownership is very uh, dubious here. It's Indeed. intense. It is intense. Okay, so Jeff thought keeps he keeps talking. Of course. So he just asked, so now Yahweh, the God of Israel, has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel, and should you possess them? Won't you possess that which Chemosh, your God, gives you to possess? This is another god that we're having mentioned. Chemosh. Oh, goodness. Chemosh. Wait, let's uh really? let's write down Chemosh and look up a little more information in the bonus content. That's a good yeah, idea. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, wait. <sighs> Are these people going to get in big trouble here because they've got another god that they're into? Well, yeah. they're, they're already not high up on the list of God's favorite people because they have another god. So, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. True. What okay. what verse are you on? I'm curious to check in the message. If they... I'm on verse twenty four. The message doesn't have verse numbers. What? <sighs> what? That's no, what? impossible. The that's message a... the message groups them all together, so they're not breaking up mm. the writing. So this has You're verses right. I remember fourteen now. They put through like... twenty seven, are all one big paragraph. I, I remember now that like in the margins they say like this is roughly equivalent to verses. Yeah, 24 through 27. That's super annoying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, this is really good, though. Let me just, I'm going to just take a random section here and see if we, uh, oh, yeah, there it is, Chemosh. So he says, why don't you just be satisfied with what your God Chemosh gives you and we'll settle for what God our God gives us. And he said, I will never be satisfied. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And that's also some throwing shade at their God, because he's like, well, Yahweh enabled us to essentially take all this land from you, um, so why don't you just be satisfied with what your God could, could manage to hang on to? Right, yeah. Oof. God, such shade. Okay. Won't you possess that which Chemosh, your God, gives you to possess? So wh- whoever Yahweh, our God, has dispossessed from before us, then will we possess? Now, are you <laughs> anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its towns, and in Aror and its towns, and in all the cities that are along by the side of the Arnon, 300 years, why didn't you recover them within that time? Jeez, Jeff. Ah, I see, I see. Wow. Let me tell you, I think Jeff Goldblum is killing this audition. (laughs) Yeah, I think he's probably gonna be this guy for sure oh, just this little bit of <laughs> too perfect and, yeah uh-huh. and and not quite aggressive it's just very passive aggressive i think he's yeah I and he's kind of doing this like long diplomat like they're in a diplomatic meeting and the other guy's being very direct like you took our lands yes. and he's like well so te- well, technically t- 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 uh, did t- we t- t- uh, well you know yeah. I just yeah, okay yeah all right <laughs> write it down casting choice jeff okay. golem is jeff thaw okay get in touch with his people <laughs> yes yeah okay so this this thing, like, why didn't you, we've had them for 300 years? Why did it take you so long? Yeah. Why didn't you recover them in that time? Jeez. Okay. I, therefore, have not sinned against you, but you do me wrong to war against me. Yahweh, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Wait, Yahweh's a judge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I think maybe he, we have two different meanings of the same word here. Okay, yeah, but they're he, saying, I mean, this is the book of Judges, I know, and they're confusing. saying that Yahweh's a judge, so well, I'm this just is what saying. Says, Yahweh, the judge with a capital J. Meaning the, the almighty judge? He's yeah, the overarching like the almighty, judge. Like the capital T judge, B judge, lowercase j, this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. So now he's calling on Yahweh to be like, hey, Yahweh, sort this out. Okay. Okay. Right. However, the king of the children of Ammon didn't listen to the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. Mm. Then Uh the spirit of Yahweh came on Jephthah, (laughs) and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over to the children of Ammon. Jephthah vowed a vow to Yahweh and said, If you will indeed deliver the children of Ammon into my hand, then it shall be that whatever comes forth from the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, it shall be Yahweh's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Hold on. Wait, what? Hold on. What what happened? Okay. Hold on. He is Uh vowing a vow and says, If you help me win this battle and defeat these Ammonites, then 
it uses the word whatever. Whatever comes forth from the doors of my house to meet me when I come back home, it's going to be yours. I'm going to offer it as a burnt offering. That could be your child. That could be your wife. Like, that could be your servant. What? Like, what is this? If I can tie this into another nerd reference, what this is reminding me of, Emily, is the yes. the law of surprise from The Witcher. Oh, yes, quite. That I, in- I loved that. That was ridiculous, <laughs> but good. What is it? You have to explain it to me. So basically, Please, it's, just- it's this thing of like, when someone saves your life and you owe them a debt, the person can choose to be like recompensated for saving your life with the the law of surprise which basically is like whatever thing they whether want. that's no yeah. it's like whatever thing you get next like whatever good thing happens to you next oh. whether that's a child or whether that's a uh, profits or whether that's some land that you got or kind of like and it did happen to be the child in exactly, the term, in the yeah, witcher yeah. meaning yeah yeah this girl that he's like trying to find the entire freaking season okay if you haven't watched the witcher maybe uh forget everything or just have a is few more a, shots but, and then you'll on. forget all of that and but then... is that a good thing though like that okay i saved your life <laughs> and then i'm like i want the next i'm you know law of surprise i'm gonna take the next good thing that you get do i really want a baby no I mean, it seems like a bad deal i'm gonna deal, say no <laughs> but that's just me i mean maybe i don't maybe know about there's anyone someone else. out there who would be like hell yes i totally want a baby for whatever purpose um, yeah <laughs> but for myself personally i would be like mm, I, mm, can i wait for the next good thing that happens to you and i hope that it's winning the lottery right it's <laughs> like you you keep that one i'll wait for the next one that would be ridiculous it's like yeah oh well you won the lottery and you know the law of surprise says that it's all mine now so sorry uh, yeah that'd be rough can you but, imagine okay, but this Yikes. is whatever comes forth uh, uh, that literally it could be anything i'm like whatever comes forward correct i would assume that would be at least a person right we can't offer up a person as a burnt offering unless you have like a dog that comes running that's to the awful door. so maybe maybe any time any time you have a family member coming back from fighting a war you should walk out the door with something held out in front of you like hold like a bushel of wheat in front of you as like, you walk out the chicken. door <laughs> right You're right like, here's the chicken the chicken really wants to see you it's the first thing to come greet why, you why does it have to be an animal i'm sorry i'm i'd rather it be i don't know something else like a uh, i said a some dust wheat? bowl a dust something bowl. what does that a even mean bowl. what is what? a dust Emily, bowl what I don't know. The, the 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 dust bowl is a thing, right? That's Maybe a, it's not a. <laughs> that's a. Oh my, Emily. Oh, it's not like okay, a pause, literal pause, bowl pause, of pause, dust. Hold on, hold on. We're pausing, reading the Bible. Emily, it's a, what? Tell me, what is the dust bowl? It was a, a period in time where, like, it was really dusty. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there are a lot of cool pictures from that. Time. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. Like, I think I was thinking more of like a tumbleweed, like a tumbleweed okay. went to tumbling. Into- okay, so it's more Wait. of like a free association error in your okay, brain. Free association. Okay, okay. So they hold out a tumbleweed. They're like, this tumbleweed is there the first you go. thing that comes there. out. To- right. He does say whatever. He doesn't say whoever. So it really exactly, could be a tumbleweed. That- it's whatever, wherever, like Shakira says. So I'm that saying, for like- some reason, comes blasting out of the doors of your house. What yes. all of our listeners can learn here is just to, like always, just as a precaution, always hold something in front of you when you go to greet a family member or someone who's coming home just in yeah, case they've no made idea. a deal you have no idea what kind of vows they were making exactly. while they were away exactly no all right let's see what happens i'm excited so jephthah passed over to the children of ammon to fight against them and yahweh delivered them into his hand yay mm. classic yeah he struck them from a roar until you come to minith <laughs> this is so funny what? that it's suddenly until you come to minith yeah. Like someone's out the side of the road giving us directions. Like <laughs> yeah. until you come to Minnet, then you're going to turn right at the gray barn and then it's <laughs> going to be great. Okay. He struck them from a roar until you come to Minnet, even 20 cities, mm. and to a- Abel Karamim with a what? very great slaughter. So the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Jephthah came to Mizpah to his house, and behold, his daughter came out to mm. meet him. Oh, shit. It, with does ta- that mean she's with, gonna die? Oh, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, was she holding the tambourines out in front of her? As, Is the and tambourine gonna them? die? Perhaps the <laughs> dance will die. Oh. The day the the music and <laughs> dance died. <laughs> And she was his only child. Oh. Uh. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. Oh, dear. It happened 
when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you are one of those who trouble me, for I have opened my mouth to Yahweh, and I can't go back. Oh. Oof. She said to him, Awkward. She said to him, Dad, this is soup's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to die now. She said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to Yahweh. Do to me according to that which has proceeded out of your mouth, because Yahweh has taken vengeance for you on your enemies, even on the children of Ammon. Wow, so she's she like said, willingly getting tossed into the volcano. Damn. She doesn't, but she doesn't even know. He hasn't even told her what, what he promised. She's I think just like, she oh, oh, she's it. just like, well, they, you did something for him, so I guess I'm a part of it. Let's do it, mm. Dad. Little did she, she know. Yeah, she said to her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may depart and go down on the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and what? my companions. What? What? Get, get to the end. Is that the end of the sentence? That's the end of the sentence. Oh. Yes. Wow. That's the end of her pitch. So she's like, okay. Wait. So you offered me up to Yahweh as a burnt offering. Huh. Okay. Well, I understand why you would do that. It makes sense. Yahweh did a really great thing No, it for didn't. You, but, but here, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me pitch you this, Dad. Daddy-o. What if I just go away for a little while? <laughs> Yeah, like give me a, and, uh, give me some time before that. Like, let me just go. All, yeah, like I, I'm gonna, you know, virginity. I'm gonna be sad about my virginity, you know. So, so it's not about me going off to Vegas for two months and just having a wild time. It's you know, I'm gonna be sad about my virginity and my companions. I'm gonna bring my girlfriends with me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. Okay, he said go. He sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and mourned her virginity on the mountains. Wait, seriously? It's what not like she's going to go, like, try this? to find a guy to bang and, like, her... <laughs> okay, like... hang on. There's only, there's only two more verses okay, in the okay, chapter. Please. I want to read to the end, and then I have to know what the message says about <laughs> yes, this. Yeah, yes, yes. I've got it pulled sure. up. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It happened at the end of two months that she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow, which she had vowed, and she was a virgin... It was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to celebrate the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Okay, first of all, we have to write that down for bonus content because I got to know about this whole yearly celebration where we all get to go Wait, is that a bachelorette it? party. That's it. That's the end of the chapter. You mean a bachelorette party for your virginity? For your virginity. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go away soon. Do, 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 do. Enjoy it while you can. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Wait, enjoy what? Your virginity? That's Yeah, you know, enjoy like all the patriarchs thinking that you're like pure and and worthy of of being a human being, I guess. Um, Wait, but did she die? What happened? No, she didn't. She just went away. No. She no. Just, but she came her, back. You just read that she came back and then he killed her. Wait, he did? What? No, he didn't. No, but read what? it. Read, no. read it. Read it again. What really? <laughs> it happened at the end of two months. She returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. Oh, there it is. Oh, yikes! What? That's Wait, awful. What? Jeez. Well, this is terrible. I know. Yeah, it is terrible. I know. Okay, Wait, now, so she now asked it makes like, sense. Now I'm going to burn you at the stake. She asked Sorry. for two months, and she, it wasn't even like, okay, this is two months for me and my girlfriends to plan how I'm going to blow this joint and get away. It, oh, my God. That's what it should have been. Maybe they tried to, and, and they didn't do it successfully. I have so many questions. I want to write down this story and look up more in the bonus content, but Jace, please. This is so please, awkward. Please, please, please. Right, so what so the message, say? message that the should. message the message says, um, and then she said to her father, "But let this one thing be done for me: give me two months to wander through the hills and lament my virginity, since I will never marry I mm-hmm. and my dear friends." Oh, so as in, let me go nuts because I'm not going to get married and I'm going to die. <laughs> well, I don't but know. She died Hold- a virgin, so yeah. she didn't go that nuts. Exactly, Maybe. didn't go nuts enough. Maybe. So then, uh, oh, 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 yes, go, he said. She, <laughs> it, uh-huh. says, it says, oh, yes, go. And I was trying to put some Jeff Goldblum on there. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, uh, go, go, do your, do your thing, do your stuff. Uh, he sent her off for two months. She and her dear girlfriends went among the hills, <laughs> lamenting that she I'm would sorry. never marry. At the end of the two months, she came Maybe back. Maybe they just had nutso lesbian sex. Yeah, oh, and know. that doesn't count for virginity in Yahweh's count eyes. For, so, for breaking yeah. your hymen, okay. yeah. Okay. I, I th- mean, it could have. Yeah, they got to be Anyways, careful. They were careful. The, they knew what they were doing. Not with a penis, though. Right. They knew what maybe they were doing. Maybe it was doing. all outer, maybe it was all outer course, you mm, know? Yeah, there you go. You're right. 
So at the end of two months, she came back to her father. He fulfilled the vow with her that he had made. Awkward. She had never slept with a man. It became Exa- a custom. Exactly. There it is. Man. She right. had never slept with a man. Yeah. Mm. It became a custom in Israel that for four days every year, the young women of Israel went out to mourn for the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Is this the origin of Skirt Club? What's Whoa. a Skirt Club? Oh, Skirt Club is it's oh it's it's the new hotness for the past couple of years. Like in New York what? and L.A., they have these uh, women only <sighs> sex parties. Uh, oh, yeah, it's called Skirt Club. Yeah, you should go, Emily. It'd I've never great. heard of this in my <laughs> yeah, life. Skirt Club. Yeah. yeah, and you could you can go, and when everyone starts getting sexual, you'll be like, "I thought we were here to mourn for the daughter <laughs> of Jephthah." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aren't you here bewailing your virginity? And right. then I storm out, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, no, obviously not, because that went away a long time ago." <laughs> wow. All right. What a nutso story. What was that? I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Pretty bonkers. And also, also, it is another one of these stories where it's, if you're looking at it as, as just a history or a story like Game of Thrones, it's like, yeah, that was like a good, a good, a good story, right? It was a sad story. It was an upsetting story, but it was a good story. Uh-huh. But, but when you're trying to look at it through this like modern day religious lens of like good and bad, right and wrong, it's like, wait, which side are we again? I, I don't also, know, yes, Exa- that, but that's like, like half the Bible. Because I also, I just hold the phone because I also thought that we established very early on no more human sacrifices, no more sacrificing well, your sons and daughters to nope. Yahweh. But it's like, well, but if you said that you would, and if you were a fool and said, whatever comes through my doors, I'm going to sacrifice them. Yahweh is a bloodlust here. He really, <sighs> I think he does. I think he's trying to to, to like suppress it. But truthfully, he just wants your sons and daughters and, you know, and the, to kill really them all. In, yeah, they really lean into her being a virgin. It's like after he yeah. sacrifices her, they have to really reiterate she never slept with a man. And there's something about like fetishizing that like, mm. oh, yeah. we killed a virgin. Virgin sacrifice, the best kind of sacrifice. I, I did not. I had no idea that. I mean, I, I was... Okay, way, <laughs> way, way back in Genesis when there was the whole thing with the binding of Isaac and Isaac maybe being sacrificed, but then not, or maybe it was edited because, you know, human sacrifice fell out of favor. I was I was kind of accepting, you know, the inner like evangelical 12 year old inside of me was kind of accepting like, okay, maybe there used to be human sacrifice in the Bible. I can get it. Maybe we edited it out. But but this far along in the history that it shows up again is just bonkers and baffling mm-hmm. to me. A couple mm-hmm. a couple of thoughts that I had here. One is that, okay, again, let's assume that we're reading the story as it is, right? And we're not trying to add any like, oh, well, it was edited later or this was added. If we're just reading it as it is, the difference is that back then it was like Yahweh says, hey, you, I'm going to test you, sacrifice your son. And he's like, okay. And then last minute Yahweh's like, Haha, JK, don't. Good. You passed the test. That was totally a test. I definitely didn't want you to do that. JK. Come on. He's going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> but then fast forward to here where from the account that we read, the Jeff, Jeff Goldblum is like, I'll do this, Yahweh. Yahweh doesn't answer, but he wins. Right? Because this is. What does he win? He wins the war. Like he, he beat the people. And that's why. Yahweh, oh. you know, that's why it's like, oh, well, Yahweh held up his end of the deal. So I've got to sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my home that in this one, like Yahweh doesn't tell him to do that. He's not someone who talks directly to Yahweh to even get that like, wait, 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 don't just kidding. So I could even see if you were trying to like be an apologist and look at it that way, you could go, oh, well, no, this guy's just kind of not all there. He was a little bonkers and made us. Like he shouldn't have made the vow in the first place. Right. He shouldn't have. So maybe that maybe I'm getting too like tinfoil hat with this or something. But anyway, that that thought came to mind of like, well, if you really want to look at the wording, but but maybe Yahweh wasn't involved in this one. But then that makes the argument. Okay. But then, then it implies (laughs) that Jephthah won by his own power. And we have a precedent of like, Yahweh's not into that. that. Mm -hmm. He does not like that. that. Mm -hmm. He does not like any implication that he had no hand in the victory. So that's, that's true. We have, yeah. Many hands. Well, I feel All like right. we need to move on, but we need to, we'll we'll look up more about this in the bonus content and see what we can find out. Yeah. Also, the fact that they called it like a a slaughter or something of him winning, 
like the fact that it used the words a slaughter to describe it. I'm like, again, like that seems like a weird word to use to describe the good guy's victory. Right. At least by our modern day standards of like this clear black and white, good and bad. And it, definitely, I think it really makes a case for like, that's not what this part of the Bible was ever meant to be. That this wasn't intended to what be was like, it meant a, to be? that this was a, a history. It's like, this is the story of our people. And like, these yeah. are the legends of our people. And these are the stories that have been passed I down. Say, and some of it's good and some of it's bad. Some of it right. is kind of black. Yeah. Not black and white. It's just like, it it's, is. It's not necessarily a morality tale. That I say. It yeah. just is legends and stories. Again, I like Game of Thrones as an analogy because mm-hmm. with Game of Thrones too, like there's there's not a lot of very clear like good, good guys and bad, and bad guys. guys. Yeah. And there's definitely not like a side that's 100% good, right? Like nah. everyone does some bad and you can decide decide with some of them as you're watching, but it's not like this clear black and white, like these ones are always good and these ones are always bad. Yeah. And I feel like the Bible is a lot like that. Anyway, maybe maybe years from now when historians find a bunch of copies of A Song of Ice and Fire, they'll they'll think it was a religious text too, and then they'll you know. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Continuing on with Judges twelve, Judges twelve, Judges. The men of Ephraim were gathered together and passed northward, and they said to Jephthah, "Why did you pass over to fight against the children of Ammon and didn't like call us to go with you?" <laughs> <laughs> like we get will, on your cell bra <laughs> right we will burn your house on you with fire what whoa, whoa, wait we're whoa. gonna get in your oh house and burn it with fire <laughs> on you okay i will say that gives me a new appreciation because every time i come to la there's you know like 200 different people who are like oh my god you're in town we should hang out yada, 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 the whole thing <laughs> And sometimes I'm like, okay, yes, all right, okay, busy schedule, but yes, I'll make effort to hang out, I'll make effort to hang out, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some people I'm just like, oh, I just, I'm not going to have time, you know, yada, yada. I do at least get an appreciation that they're not threatening to burn my house with fire for yeah. not yeah. calling them when I pass through. Gracious. What's, what's really great to add to this idea of like, pick up your cell, brah, is that this, this sentence, so after the, and you didn't call us to go out with you, question mark, this next sentence has no capitalization even at the beginning. I'm assuming this was just a typo <laughs> on the part of like an, Bible study website. tools. Yeah. They were just texting. But it's like they're texting. It's all lowercase. <laughs> and it says, we will burn your house on you with fire. It's not even like English. It's it's like Bro. they were texting it in a hurry when they're mad and just didn't. I'm going to burn emojis. on your house with you with fire, bro. <laughs> if you don't do what we want. Wow. Okay. Who we're is gonna... this that's speaking? Who's pissed off at him? The men of Ephraim. Okay. The Ephraim- Ephraimites are Et- pissed. Right. And they were the Dang. ones who came to him in the first place. Is that correct? Sure. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know. <laughs> Let's look it up later. Right, that was the elders of Gilead that came to him. Yeah, so, the elders yeah. of Gilead. So yeah, maybe it's a different I, group is, now. Okay. Yeah, Ephraim's not really been in the story quite no, yet. But he's okay. pissed because he hasn't been in the story. And he's like, dude, why didn't you call us? Okay, well, here's his, his classic Jeff Goldblum comeback. We'll see if he can live up to it here. Jephthah said to them, I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, you didn't save me out of their hand. Oh. When I saw that you didn't save me, I put my life in my hand and passed over against the children of Ammon. And Yahweh delivered them into my hand. Why then are you come up to me this day to fight against me? Okay. Oh, God. I, He's really just arguing with everybody. Yeah. Kind of talk, tries to talk circles around everybody. It's a good yeah. Jeff Goldblum role. I love oh, it. Yeah. Then Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. Oh, wow. And, and the men of Gilead struck Ephraim because they said, you are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim and in the midst of Manasseh. I didn't understand that. I don't know. Okay, so Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead. So he is still the leader of them, apparently. And then he went to fight with Ephraim. And they said something about being fugitives of Ephraim. I don't, I don't understand that. They threw some smack. They talked some talk. Talked some shade. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Did they walk the walk, though? 
We'll find out. The Gileadites took the fords of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. It was so that when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, let me go over, and the men of Gilead said to him, are you an Ephraimite? And he said, (laughs) no. Then they said to him, wait, wow. (laughs) Then they said to him, say now Shibboleth. And he said, Shibboleth. (laughs) <laughs> shibboleth <laughs> for, hold on for he couldn't manage to pronounce it right whoa well i'm assuming what? we're not pronouncing it right then is that either. Their, wait is then that... then they laid hold on him and killed him at the fords of the jordan of course they did hold. surprise surprise was this jeff thought that they killed who did they kill no when no okay so they killed it they killed a an f a not ephraimite no an ephraimite so the, no, a not Ephraimite. They said, who, "Are you no, an yes, Ephraimite?" Uh, and he yes, said, Ephraimite. "No." <laughs> <laughs> I thought can that they read, said no. Can we, can we read the message just to understand okay, this okay, a little okay. bit? Okay. <laughs> not Ephraimite. <laughs> yes, Ephraimite. Good okay, Lord. Okay. Okay. So Gilead is fighting Ephraim, right? Yes. We've, yeah. We've covered that under the leadership of Jethah. Gilead is fighting Ephraim. Okay. Yes. Okay. So message. Gilead captured the fords at the jo- uh, uh, sorry the fords of the Jordan at the crossing to Ephraim right so all the places you can go across the river they okay. like occupied those if an Ephraimite fugitive said let me cross the men of Gilead would ask are you an Ephraimite and he would say uh, no and oh I see he's lying okay, okay yeah okay, okay, okay and they would say say Shibboleth but he would always say Shibboleth. Uh, he wouldn't he couldn't say it right oh so they knew because of like the regional dialects i yeah, see yeah wow it's funny actually i remember my grandpa telling me a story about when he was uh in uh, world war 1 or 2 i forget two. which one it two i'm assuming two, it's definitely it's two not world war 1 How old yeah is your my parents grandpa? Right. Well, okay. your parents are quite young in comparison to like mine my, and my true. grandfather was in world war too okay so okay. if my grandfather was in world war ii your grandfather was definitely not in a world war okay. one right my grandfather was in world war ii or some some sort of conflict somewhere <laughs> and they had a similar thing actually where like their passphrase to get in or whatever was specifically a word that was hard for non-americans to say mm, like, for, for like the same with an kind r of... or a t what is it what, what's hard for yeah I, I, yeah it was uh, yeah either had like l's or r's or something yeah, that's like exactly. very different in other languages yeah uh, and so they like intentionally put that into their passwords and stuff you know the whole like knock on the door be like say the password and they couldn't say it anyway that's that's huh. nuts that that's in the bible Mm-hmm. Okay, so wow, shibboleth. I so, wonder what shibboleth means. We might have to look that up too. Yeah, maybe we could look up the right pronunciation of shibboleth. Ah, so then at least we can get across the Jordan <laughs> <laughs> and won't be killed. Yeah. <laughs> then they would uh, grab him and kill him if oh, if he didn't say sadly. it. Sadly, right. yeah. sad. Yeah. Um, there fell at that time of Ephraim forty-two thousand. Dang. I don't know if that was 42,000 who got killed trying to cross the river, or I think just total 42,000 or 42 units, as we've established before. Yeah, whatever that means. Jeff Goldblum judged Israel six years. Oh, that's it. Then that, That's oh. very short. Then died Jephthah the Gileadite and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead. After him, Ibzan, the magician... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the great what? Ibzan. He's a magician? <laughs> so I just like the, no. Uh, I just like his name. It sounds like a magician oh. name. Okay. After <laughs> him. look like a magician. <laughs> Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had. Oh, oh, he wasn't actually the magician. You no, just he wasn't that. a magician. Oh, dang I, it. Was, I was so excited. I know, so I'm was sorry. I. I'm sorry. Jeez. Uh, he had 30 sons and 30 daughters. Wow. He, he sent abroad. And 30 <laughs> daughters he brought in from abroad for his sons. Oh. Oh, wait, I see. Oh, he wait, sent his oh. daughters abroad and and then his sons married 30 daughters from abroad. Yeah, that oh, gosh, move. I I'm sorry. I thought that you meant that the sons and daughters married each other and I was like <laughs> <laughs> no. no. No, 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 no. Uh he judged Israel 7 years. Is Ibzan the magician died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him. Okay, another shorty. Yeah. Another shorty. The most interesting thing in his life was his the economics of where he sent his children. Right. So he's really going for this kind of 
later would be a very fashionable European thing, right? To like send your children abroad to marry people from other countries uh, for political reasons, you know, like the French, oh, yeah. French royalty did a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh. Ibzan died and was buried. Yeah, yeah. After him, Elon, the Zebulonite, Musk. Elon Musk, the Zebulonite, judged Israel and he judged Israel 10 years. Elon Musk, the Zebulonite, died and was buried in Aijalon, in the land of Zebulun. We're really just burning through judges here. Yeah, Jeez. I just got to get through a few more before we end here. And then we <laughs> go on to the last chapter that Emily's going to read. After him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 sons. What? No, what? sorry. He, sorry. sorry? He, me, yeah, he had them in batches. How many sons? <laughs> no, no, no. 30 I, and then 40. I'm off here. He had 40 sons and 30 sons' sons, so 30 also known as grandsons, <laughs> Okay. That's, who, who okay. rode on 70 donkey colts. Again, the donkey colts. What? That is not... Po- I'm sorry. My mother would be like having a conniption right now if she's hearing this. <laughs> she's like, they can't ride on colts, especially not donkey colts. Yeah. And he judged Israel eight years. Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Parathonite, died and was buried at Pirathon in the land of Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalekites. That's the end of Judges 12. Wow. wow. That's... How many judges did we just run through, is my question. Like, it felt like there were a lot of judges that we that just like ran through. was like three or four, right? Because there was Jephthah, there was Ibzon, there was Elon Musk, and then was there another one? Uh, Abdon, yeah. Abdon, so the, Abdon. The Ab Master 5000. I was going to say, it sounds like something from an infomercial. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Have you strapped on your Abdon? That's a uh, good, yeah, that's oh, a I good like that. Use really your good. yeah, use your ab done today to get those killer abs you've always wanted. Right. It's gonna I be my uh, my next million dollar idea. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> love yeah, it. Yeah, so that was four judges that we went through in quick succession. So yeah. how, can I say do, do we know how many judges we've had so far? No. I have oh. no idea. We'll, we'll have to go back and do a count sometime. Maybe yeah. by the end we'll go back and I count. I bet you them we're all. approaching ten ish, I would say. Do you know how many judges we have total? No. No, I don't. <laughs> These are the kind of things that I expect both of you to know, and you don't, and it's like, why not? No, I never don't. got quizzed on that. I never got yeah. quizzed on this weird virgin sacrifice. I, I never yeah, got quizzed I, on any of this. I never heard about any of this. I, is actually, that a thing that I, you remember? I do remember. I remember this story. The, really? The, the story what? of him making the that virgin vow suicide and, then, sacrifice. Really? and then coming home. Yeah, I do remember Jeez. that one. They taught you that one as a child or as a teenager or when you were in almost seminary i feel like i would have learned this later in life the fact that i remember it pretty well surely surely i must have learned it later but it might have been like high school it might not have been like later later when i was really like this was something that i remember learning about in a church not like i studied this on my own huh. so mm. i did this somehow Jeez. did come up in a church that i remember this story because i remember it being told where he's like so heartbroken that he made this deal and then didn't think well, it through. Well, that's some Honestly, he, yeah, he didn't seem that heartbroken. He was just he like, was well... He was heartbroken for a second did... when he realized he had to do it, but then he still did it. He just, yeah. I know, I know. That is the weird question of like, how heartbroken are you if you still do it? Not very, yeah. apparently. Gosh. Yeah, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. All right, Emily, do it. Uh, but first, before we do it, we're going to talk about some ways in which you can contribute and support our show. Tired of doing crunches and not getting results? Don't have time for your workouts? Can't stand the thought of cutting down on your unleavened bread? Well, fret no more. Introducing the Abdon 5000. Just strap it on while you're listening to your favorite podcast, Drunk Bible Study, and it does the work for you. Have you strapped on your Abdon? Results shown are not typical. Abdon 5000 makes no guarantees about your results. So now let us move on to Judges 13. Here we are. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. Classic. Surprise, drink. surprise. Drink. Drink Repetition. Drink surprise, for that. surprise. Wow. Yeah, and Yahweh delivered them into the hands of the Philistines 40 years. Have they has he done that before? Specifically the Philistines? I don't I don't remember. It's always been into someone's hands. Ah. There was a certain man of Zora. With the family of the family of the Dananites, whose name was Manoa, and his wife was barren and didn't bear. Hmm. <laughs> oh, all right. That was a lot of names. Yeah, it um, was. It was. His name was Ma- 
Man, His, man, man, witch, man. No. Yes. So there was a, a certain man of Zora. So I guess the place of the family of the Danonites. So that's his last name. And his first name was Manawa and Manawa's wife was barren and she mm. didn't bear. Got it. Okay. She didn't okay. bear gotcha. any bears. Okay. okay. The angel of Yahweh appeared to the woman and said to her, see now you are barren and don't bear, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please beware and drink no wine nor strong drink and don't eat any unclean thing. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come on what on his head. Oh, I know what we're setting up for the child shall be a Nazarite. Dedeker, this is a thing that you were. For this child to be in <laughs> what? No, I was just the Church of the Nazarene. Oh. Church of the Nazarene. But remember the Nazarites, we learned about them in Exodus and Leviticus. Oh, were they the ones who you can't do, you have to shave heads and can't, stuff? Yeah, can't drink alcohol, have to shave, can't shave oh. their head. It's that or... they, they shave their head when they first join and then they can't okay. shave it again until they leave yes. and then they shave it. Yes, okay. but I remember okay. now, I know what we're setting up and it's exciting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So, I, <sighs> all right. Well, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so, the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to save Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. No. Is okay. it? Let's oh, keep... wait. Is it Jesus? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're still a few Definitely hundred not. years too early for that. Oh, well, I don't know. Let's is it? Keep, is it Samson? Keep going. Keep going. Is it Samson? Keep going. Is it Samson? <laughs> why why would it be samson because about the hair yeah there you yeah. go that's a good critical thinking yeah C- kind of thank you Controlled critical thank thinking you. the you know the only thing that i know about samson is from the the regina specter song okay oh, oh okay he well. ate a slice of wonder bread and went right back to bed okay <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe this account will be a little different than that one. yeah probably <laughs> All right, all right. The woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came to me, and his face was like the face of the angel of God. Very awesome. Very (laughs) awesome. This is literally what it says. This is the best way she could describe it to her husband. Freaking rad, man. I can't even. It was freaking just like off the chain. I can't even, okay? It was very awesome. Think of the most awesome face you can think of and times that by a hundred. Way awesomer than your face, husband. Way awesomer, I've got to say. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so it was very awesome, and I didn't ask him whence he was, neither did he tell me his name, but he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine or strong drink, and eat no unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Cool. Then Manoa entreated Yahweh and said, O oh Lord, please let the man of God whom you did send come again to us and teach us what we shall do to the child. Who I shall would be like born. to also see his awesome face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me his awesomeness. That's really what he wants. He's like, I, I want to see it. this awesomeness, Yahweh. <laughs> I want to see this awesome guy. God listened to the voice of Manoa and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoa, her husband, mm. wasn't with her. Mm. The Ugh. woman, all right, the woman made haste and, and ran and told her husband and said to him, behold, the man has appeared to me who came to me the other day. Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said to him, are you the man who spoke to the woman? He said, <laughs> the woman, I am. my wife, who I'm yeah, this next to. This chick right here, whoever the hell <laughs> she is. And he said, I am. Manoa said, now let your words happen. What shall <laughs> be your words? <laughs> I love it. What shall be the ordering of the child and how shall we do to him? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> wow, this guy is a goofball, this man. Yeah, I, I want like some like really like the guy who played Kramer or someone to play him. Oh, yeah. Oh, like some fine. goofball. Yeah. yeah. The angel of Yahweh said to Manoa, of all that I said... To the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that comes of the vine, neither let her drink wine nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. Manoah said to the angel of Yahweh, I pray you, let us detain you that we may make ready a kid for you. (laughs) (laughs) That's weird. A kid, like literally a kid, not like a child or (laughs) a young son strapping lad, a kid. (laughs) 
The angel of Yahweh said to Manoah, though you detain me, I won't eat of your bread. And if you make ready a burnt offering, you must offer it to Yahweh. For Manoah didn't know that he was the angel of Yahweh. Wait, who? Oh, he didn't this, know that the angel of Yahweh was the angel of Yahweh. He just thought that he was some bro. I think some maybe awesome he didn't. Dude. He didn't trust it. He's some like, yeah, guy his face with an is awesome, awesome face. but like, I don't know if. But I don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah. Just some guy, some awesome guy. Manoah said to the angel of Yahweh, "What is your name that when your words happen, we may honor you?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> The angel of Yahweh said to him, why do you ask after my name, seeing it is wonderful? (laughs) Like seeing that the name is wonderful? I don't know. That prophecy is wonderful? Uh, That which part is wonderful? I don't know. It just says, seeing it is wonderful. Why do you ask after my name, seeing it is wonderful? (laughs) Uh, So something that we'll do in the bonus is I would like to read this whole section to you guys from the message because it is also wonderful. Amazing. (laughs) So Manoah took the kid with the meal offering and offered it. Oh, oh, they mean like a goat, like they a baby do mean goat. mean a goatee, yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought that they were talking about some kid, some like some child, but no, no, a, a, a baby goat. Okay, right. so they took the kid with the meal offering and offered it on the rock to Yahweh, and the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. What is happening? I don't know. I don't know what he he did. I don't know what he wondrously did. I don't know. Is he like consuming the the offering like in a big old pillar of fire? Is he doing like like juggling tricks? Is he like, what is going on? Whatever he did, he did it wondrously. Okay. Okay. Okay, It's wondrous. So for it happened when the flame went up toward the sky from off the altar, that the angel of Yahweh ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah Mm -hmm. and his wife looked on and they fell on their faces to the ground. Of course. Classic. Classic. Yes. I love it too. I, it just it makes me feel like they all of a sudden just like walked on ice and then they just like fell on their faces. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, <laughs> like it was awful. But yeah. OK. But the angel of Yahweh did no more appear to Manoah or to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of Yahweh. <laughs> yeah. Good one. <laughs> all right. Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Oh, shit. Really? Oh. But his wife said to him, if Yahweh were pleased to kill us, he wouldn't have received a burnt offering and a meal offering at our hand. Neither would he have shown us all these things, nor would at the time have told such things as these. Yeah, the wife makes sense. She's like, why would he kill us if he specifically sent someone to give me all these all these like prenatal diet instructions and do us wondrously. Stop being such an idiot, Kramer. Yeah, calm down, bro. (laughs) The woman bore a son and named him Samson. Oh, called it. Dang, I got that. (laughs) <laughs> okay, and the child grew, and Yahweh blessed him. The spirit of Yahweh began to move him in Manadan, Mana, Mana, Dan, Dan, between <laughs> Zora and Esh Towel. The end. <laughs> the end of- <laughs> uh, so once again. Once again, we have been uh-huh. left with a little bit of a teaser of like, and they named the si- the kid Samson in like the last scene, and then it's like a close up of the little kid's face as we see is like hit like maybe some cuts his of golden him, locks of him getting cascading. a little older, yeah, exactly, and his hair getting longer, and then we cut to black, and then they start playing the Regina Spector song, and that's the end of the episode. Yes, I think I'm confused about whether we're making a movie or a TV show about this. But... <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know what the child of like Jeff Goldblum and whoever the hell the mom is is going to look no, like. But Jeff Goldblum is a different character. This is a different character. Yeah, Damn. this one's Kramer. Remember, this is, this is uh, yeah. Kramer who, and someone okay, else. Kramer Michael, Michael and Richards is the name of the actor. Who that's played. the one. Yeah. Now this is going to be very important. We do need to think about casting for Samson. Who's going to be our big beefy boy? Our big handsome beefy boy? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. You yeah, that's so? who came to mind. I guess we did kind of slot, slot him in ahead <laughs> <Yeah>. of time. <laughs> did, okay. He's not anyone else at this point. Yeah, I'm actually surprised we haven't cast him yet, but it makes sense. He's got, it's got to be right because he's got the Thor hair, like the long hair. I mean, yeah, he, he, can... he didn't in the later films, but we can get it back. We yeah, can, we, can we got to get it back. We can grow it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, well, write it down. We got Chris Hemsworth cast yeah. for the. I, I for got him written down, and I got Michael Richards as Manoa and Jeff Goldblum as Jeff Thaw. So. This was an action-packed episode. I've got to say, <laughs> yeah, wow, seriously. a lot happened. Re- 
I will say, if Judges is the, good. Yeah, yeah, for all the blood and violence and death, I've been really enjoying Judges a lot. Yeah, oh. I, this is might be my favorite book so far. I know that's a wow. bold claim, but I wow. think it might be that's my favorite. That's so funny that back in my more Christian days, if anyone asked me, what was your favorite book in the Bible? I definitely wouldn't have said Judges. But, what would you but, have said? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't even know. Probably like the Proverbs or Song of Songs or Psalms or something like that. See, I um, probably would have said something from the New Testament. Like I would have picked yeah. one of the Gospels or something. Yeah. Which really? one is your favorite Gospel? I won't remember because it'll happen in like seven <laughs> years, but tell me. Uh, I I like them each. F- well, I like them all except for John for different things. Although I think as far as reading a book, John's probably the best book. If you were reading yeah, it purely it from like together. a... I thought you guys hated yeah. Paul or something. Paul's not one of the Gospels. He came along uh, later. Yeah, uh, I do have some issues with Paul, but we'll get to that in several years when we finally what get to the What is it? John, Testament. Jacob, Jingleheimer, Smith. Yeah, Smith. Those are the, four, the four Gospels. John, it's, Jacob, Jingleheimer, and Schmidt. Yeah. It's John, Paul, George, Ringo is okay. what it is. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, uh, John is the one that's I, I would say quoted the most is John because um, he kind of took the most liberties with the story, in my opinion, which I think Isn't makes John him... three sixteen. Yeah, that's, that's the, the, one. One. the big that's one. The one. Yeah. That's the one. Which I think makes John arguably the best reading just like as a book for its own sake. Um, but theologically, maybe more problematic. Anyway, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll, we'll talk anyway. about it all later. Well, I have some very exciting news because we have two toasts to do to our lovely patrons. Heck yes. yes. So we need to raise a toast to Brady and to Ashley as well for becoming one of our parishioners. Um, If you want a personalized toast on the show as well, you can get on that at patreon.com slash drunk Bible study. But so what really, was it again? Cheers to Brady and yeah, Ashley. Brady and Ashley, Ashley. Thank you so much Clinky. for supporting the show, for helping us to get through this, for helping us to <laughs> have a beer budget and be able to <laughs> <laughs> right. keep on keeping on with this show. Um, hope that you enjoy. Thank you all for joining us for Bible study today. If you want even more drunk Bible study, including ad-free episodes, early releases, personal toasts on the show, and more, you can become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunk Bible study. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and then write us a nice review on iTunes or Stitcher, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners in the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group. Find us on Twitter at Drunk Bible Cast, on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Emily Matlack, and me, Dedeker Winston. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album Home of the The The. The theme song for the Book of Judges is The People's Dread Judges by Jace Lindgren, Feet, Emily Matlack. <laughs> for more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. I'm your day.